So for the last 45 minutes, I've just been flicking a bomb around the peg, just with double maggot on, just trying to catch anything. I've had about a dozen little roach. I'm only fishing light, I'm a 16. I've just gone across up to the reeds on the other bank, didn't get anything and just dropped it about two metres short off him. It's gone straight round and I've got a proper fish. Well, once again, Happy New Year to everyone. It's the 4th of January. I know a lot of people probably haven't seen the previous three videos that have been on um, this month. I know a lot of you are only tuning in for the Thursday night stuff, so welcome. Happy New Year. Welcome to all new subscribers, and thanks once again for all the support last year. You've no idea how much it means to me, especially to see the channel grow the way that it has. So, what a Christmas, what a week. I just thought I'd have a bit of a catch up. I mean, what a Christmas we've all had. I mean, weather wise, it's kind of matches have been off, matches have been on, they've been postponed, they've been cancelled. And then, even when some people have been able to get on the venues, they've fished horrendous. But I mean, this is hopefully the worst time of year that we're going to see. A lot of it is to do with the venues that we're fishing. I understand that. I've not really had any matches over the Christmas period except the one. I fished a Golden Rod match at Lawford Lakes, and I intended on doing a live match video for you of that day, but when I, by the time I got there for breakfast uh, everything was a little bit of a rush job and I just wanted to focus on my fishing and I never really got a chance to do it so I do apologize for that quick rundown on the match it was um, it was cold it was bright and the lake was calm I ended up drawing the split section there's been a split section in the qualifiers there which has been Speci Burr has been in with Arena and unfortunately or fortunately, depends how you look at it, Arena has kind of been dominating, it's been fishing well. They haven't been catching many fish there, but they've been catching carp. And as it turned out, I drew on Speci Burr. Can't even remember the peg number. 22, I think it may have been. I think that's the peg where I had that 24 pounder from earlier on last year, I think. Anyway, cut a long story short, the carp really didn't feed on Speci at all. I think it was literally about two carp caught or three. Anyway, I fished for carp, we knew we needed carp, we heard through the match that they were catching carp on arena and so we needed, we knew we needed about 60 to 70 pound even to stand a chance of winning that 20 peg zone. You're not going to get that weight of skimmers, certainly not this time of year. So I just really went for carp, I went for carp for two and a half hours, never had a sign, never fished the method long. I went really short for the first few minutes just to try and nick an early carp, never had a sign, went long. I even came back to mid-range, never even had a liner, I couldn't believe it. But what I did was as a backup, because I know what that lake can be like, I actually put quite quite a positive line in on a, on a short line at 15 metres. And after two and a half hours, I was that, I was just bored out of my brains. Nobody had caught any carp down there, nobody had had a sign. I, I had Ian Giddings on my left, who fishes there every week. He knows the venue really well, and even he was saying, we just, this, just ain't gonna happen as it turned out it was right it was bang on but after two and a half hours i thought i've just we knew they were catching on arena and so i just kind of went to win my 10 pegs section just to try and pick up the section money and i went in on that short line and it was a bit iffy to start with i didn't really commit to it to be completely honest because i was that adamant we need carp so but i caught a few skimmers i ended up with just under 25 pound of skimmers which was a little bit of a confidence boost in my approach on there uh, maybe they just switched on maybe i was in a good area i don't know but anyway i had 25 pound grant grant albert did fantastic i think he was on peg four on Specy lake and i don't really know how, how long he spent fishing for carp I don't, I, I don't even know if he did fish for carp but by the sounds of it he's got his head down on a nice cage feeder and just caught anything and he's caught all day and he's ended up with 50 pound i think he had it just absolutely annihilated that whole zone, that whole, well, sorry, that whole section, Speci Burr. I think I was third on that whole bank with just under £25. Mr. Matt Pilly, if you're watching, mate, massive congratulations once again. He drew on Arena and, um, yeah, I think he had a slow start, to be fair. I don't know if he's changed something in order to catch or whether they've just turned up, I don't know. But, yeah, he's won the zone and he's qualified absolutely over the moon for you, mate. Brilliant. Will Freeman was on the other lake. 
over on match light low framing as you may know he's not really a commercial type angler um, did brilliant his fish i'll not tell you exactly what he did because he might not want me to tell you but um, he's done, done brilliant he's qualified absolutely fantastic really pleased for him so he's in the final as well so they're two really good friends that are considered to be in that final and they're really good anglers i'll put the results up at the end of this for you at the end of the video but yeah, I mean, I saw the results. I mean, the Yorkshire Bream Tour went to Woodsboro, and that fished incredibly hard. I couldn't believe it. Five pound won the whole match. I think four pound was second. Some brilliant anglers in that. Brilliant tip feeder anglers. I just couldn't believe how hard it had fished. But that's you know that's winter fishing. On the same day, there was a match at Bream Mecca Southfield Reservoir. I think there were 32 anglers there. Considering the conditions, you know, they're just absolutely mad for it. But anyway, that's Southfield and the popularity of the place. 32 anglers and guess what not one person caught they never had a bite again i couldn't believe that you know usually there's a pocket of fish somewhere or just didn't happen but that's winter fishing and that's why a lot of top lads don't even fish through that period spend time with the families and stuff so that's it quick rundown on what's happened over the last few days well i planned to get out on the thursday and it just didn't happen by the time i got out of bed put the kettle on went to the van it had snowed and i couldn't get a van out so that was a non-starter so I decided to go the next day just took dad for a few hours to a local local lake and I've been out testing some of the products that you saw me hold up in that bag a few weeks ago just going out some of the prototypes I know it's not a great time of year to be doing it but yeah stuff like these you've seen all these before but I took these with me as well the old uh, the juice what else we got Poloni wafters they're big and them aren't they 14 mil I think I ought to buy a bivvy Nutty Glug you've seen and the old dumbbells. I was out with all this sort of stuff but I had a bag of prototypes as well and I had a few hours with Dad obviously on the bank and it was just brilliant just to blow off the cobwebs of Christmas. You know how it is between Christmas and New Year. But I took the camera along for you so here's just a bit of footage from that for you. If it looks cold that's because it is it was only just above zero this morning when we got here I actually soaked some pellets for the pellet feeder and the water froze up within five minutes I couldn't believe it but anyway we're here just been getting a bit stir crazy We've just had Christmas week at home and we planned to go fishing yesterday it didn't happen because between the time of me coming downstairs filling the flask up and getting to the van it had snowed and that was it that was it for the day so at least we're here the sun's out I'm at a local fishery called Clearwater Lakes um, it's a beautiful fishery I mean you might recognize the owner's house opposite looks beautiful in the sunshine just thought I'd answer some of the questions from the bank today just to make it a little bit more interesting from just being in the tattle room all the time a lot of people have been asking me about certain bits of kit that I've been using for quite a while when I'm fishing commercials I'm only fishing an 11 foot rod today so I only use two sections of the old landing net handle I know a lot of you have asked when I'm why I always use a four and a half meter landing net handle that's just basically because when I'm fishing places like Southfield and those venues where you're fishing for bream I've seen lots and lots of bream that have come off just before the net and things like that and I just like to scoop those fish up as quick as I possibly can you've seen how it's fishing at Southfield recently so you know three fish can win you a match so you don't want to risk losing any any fish and that's just reason why I like to use long landing net handles like that the other thing someone asked me about was our new side tray the extendable side tray let's turn it that way for you as you can see it's well worn now battered and bruised getting along really well with it it's brilliant so it's a nice size it obviously collapses so it's more compact and the great thing is that you can probably tell if i do that you can have a look there's no legs at that side which is great so it just means you can you know you don't always have to use the extra two supporting legs which as a lot of people know especially on UK fisheries commercial fisheries where you're fishing off platforms some of the platforms are quite narrow so it's great bit of kit for that because obviously you've only it only needs to be supported at the, the box side of it which is great I'm not going through all the baits and stuff that I'm using today because I'm actually doing a bit of a video for Matrix so I don't want to give too much away for that but I will let you know about that when that video is finished Another one of the feeder arms that uh, somebody asked me about, if you can see it, is 
the one I'm using today. It's a bit, bit, great bit of kit, as you can see. It's about about 50 centimeters long, I think it is. It's got these ridges in it, which 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 helps keep the rod in position in, in between the slots. And because it's got slots, obviously that doesn't trap your line underneath. It's nice and wide, so if you're fishing with a rod on your knee and you like to move the feeder or just pull fish on, then that's why it's designed like that. And as you can see, it's got a blocker at that far end which when you're fishing like a pellet feeder like I'm doing today or a method feeder and obviously then the fish runs then obviously that stops the rod going in and there's a screw at this end as well which unscrews and that just means that that can be put on that side if you prefer it at that side just a couple of things that people have been asking me about and you know I just thought it might be better just to show you in the flesh rather than just talk about it as you can see it's a beautiful day it's just given me a chance to had a few hours with dad we're not catching many fish i'll be honest with you but not just yet anyway but days like this are great because you know the van's right behind me you can bring all your kit and i, I use days like this when you've only got a few hours spare just to i've had all my ground bait bowls soaking in water i've, I've washed a couple of things out they're just soaking so my kit's nice and clean and you know i mean we've been in the house over christmas and it, it's just great to be out as you can see it's a beautiful day hopefully that answers one or two of the questions that i know some some of you guys have been asking about and when this video is finished, I'll let you know. I've fished for ages with a pellet feeder and a method feeder. I've just not had a sign of a better fish. But for the last 45 minutes, I've just been flicking a bomb around the peg just with double maggot on just trying to catch anything I had about a dozen little roach only fishing light I'm 16 I've just gone across up to the reeds on the other bank didn't get anything and just dropped it about two meters short off him it's gone straight round and I've got a proper fish It's freezing cold. <laughs> Good looking fish though. Beautiful. Well worth waiting for. <laughs> it was just brilliant to be back on the bank, you know. You know how it is sometimes, even if your tip's not moving. Just be out there, the bright sunshine, you know, everything was really against fishing, but it was just really nice to be there and obviously have a few hours with Dad was brilliant. This weekend, my next match is a Golden Rod qualifier at lovely Boston Lakes, which has just been voted, and I don't mind saying it, voted Stillwater of the Year and Venue of the Year, I think, by Angler's Mail and Angling Times. I'm not surprised. But that's it for this Thursday. Like I say, just one match on Saturday. Sunday I think I'm out coaching, which I'm really looking forward to. I've had a bit of a break from that. Um, and that's it really. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Don't forget there's a video every night this month. If you haven't subscribed, just hit subscribe. It's free. It'll tell you every time a video is uploaded. Loads of topics going to be covered this month. Loads of topics. And hopefully we're going to get some other anglers involved as well. Join me for the ride for 2018. Thanks for watching. Have a great Friday tomorrow and don't forget half past six there's another video. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.